start things off, Congresswoman Clark, you went to some very prestigious universities. Mm. Which one would you rate better, Harvard or Cornell? Oh my goodness, that's a tough first question. I would have to rate Cornell because when I was at Cornell, I met my husband, so you really can't beat that. Um, but it was, it's an incredible opportunity to be able to go to such prestigious colleges and universities. And really a large part of my work is making sure that that opportunity for education exists for every student and that we don't have the barriers of um, economic inequality, um, discrimination, other barriers that prevent people from getting the education that they want to seek. I have been very, very fortunate in my life and really have been devoting my work to making sure that from our youngest learners, babies and toddlers, um, through higher education and law school and graduate school and medical school, we are able to have every student, no matter what their economic standing is, be able to pursue that. All right, and so um, one of the core tenets of Sikhism is gender equality, and mm -hmm. uh, it's something our community is, like, it's very important to us. So with Virginia considering the ratification of the ERA, meaning it's a hot topic right now, what is your stance on the amendment? Uh, we just voted about uh, 10 days ago in the House of Representatives to pass the ERA to make sure that the time is extended so that all s that we can ratify it. And uh, it was a very exciting moment uh, on the floor of the House to be part of, of codifying in our Constitution that women are equal and it matters and it was um it was exciting to be joined by two very young girls from uh from virginia who have been working in their own way at uh, young ages for a number of years to get this ratified in virginia and to make sure that our constitution our founding documents in this country reflect equality for everybody and we know that when the Constitution was written, uh, it was written for white men. And uh, that while we have had case law and changes and waves of immigrants who have contributed and changed our country for the better, we want to make sure that those rights are enshrined in our founding documents. So I am excited that it is not only back in the news and back on voters' minds, but really that it is all of you. It is our younger generations who are going to push us for this positive change. Yeah. Another thing that's very important to six historically is the environment. And you recently mm. introduced a new bill that would phase out unnecessary single-use plastics. So can you tell us more about that? Yeah. Um, I really see uh, climate change protecting our environment as one of the overarching issues of all the work that we do in Congress. We all know there is an urgency to this work and that um, it is easy to close your eyes and, and step back from because it can be so overwhelming for people to think about the impact, but we can't afford to do that and as leaders, as um, people who are interested in making sure that we have this planet, that we respect it, and that we are able to turn over to the younger generations um, a planet and a strategy for addressing climate change is critical. And we have to act with urgency. And this plastic spill is one part of it because we know that um, that the plastics not only create um, a huge uh, environmental problem with their disposal um, and our real challenge in recycling many of these plastics and our recycling challenges in general. It's not enough for us just to throw things in the blue bins anymore and say, I've done my part, um, but it also continues to be a great use of fossil fuels in the creation of plastics. So this bill is trying to address all of that, build up our recycling um, platforms and technologies, make sure that we are moving off of single-use plastics and moving towards alternatives and also helping clean up uh, a lot of the ocean pollution that we have seen from plastics. So it's all part of a, a greater urgency around climate change and making sure 
that we all have clean water and air um, to be able to sustain our communities. All right, and lastly, immigration is a big issue for the mm. community because a lot of us are immigrants or the sons and daughters of immigrants. So we know that um, immigration is a big issue in America right now. So what is your stance on where America is dealing with immigration at this moment in time? I think we're in a very dangerous place with immigration. Um, this president and his administration has decided to take a course of division instead of bringing together communities and we know what immigrants contribute um, throughout the history of the United States. Most of us um, uh, are have an immigrant story of our own to tell and um, the, the native people have been oppressed and we want to make sure that we are constantly working for their rights but it is our Im immigrant communities that constantly replenish um, our American dream and who we are as Americans. And it is really, um, it's, it's striking uh, being here today to see those shared values of seeing each other's um, as equals. Um, from everything you do, it's sort of part of Sikhism is all sitting on the floor, all sort of that acknowledgement of equality um, and, and of giving back. And I think that we have to not be afraid to talk about immigration, not to be afraid to, say, to talk about how the system needs to be um, reformed and changed so that it actually works for people and there are paths to citizenship that make sense and that people can comply with. Um, but we also have to uh, make sure that we are speaking for immigrants, that we are being good allies, because it is so important at this time where we're seeing hate crimes spike, when we're seeing economic fear uh, give way to fear of the other, whatever that might be. And we certainly have forces in our politics and in our government that are looking to exploit that otherness and we as communities, uh, communities of faith, communities that care about the environment and education and creating an inclusive economy, have to make sure that we are always working to promote and protect our immigrant populations. All right, well, thank you thank so you much, much. Thank uh, for talking you. to us. Thank, thank you, you it's really good to be with you.